What's up guys, today we're going to be doing an oil change on a 2019 Honda Africa Twin with DCT. The tools that we're going to need today is an 8mm socket, a 12mm socket, a 5mm Allen wrench, a 6mm Allen wrench, oil filter pliers, and a torque wrench. First thing you're going to want to do is wash the bike. And then once that's done, make sure it's dry. I would don't recommend starting a bike right after washing it because you could have water embedded in the electronics or somewhere that it doesn't belong. Give it a chance to dry out before you start, start it up. First step of doing an oil change is warm up the bike. So we're going to just do that by going over here and the key is not in it. All right, first thing you want to do is get the bike warmed up. Once your bike is adequately warmed up, go ahead and uh, turn it off. First thing you want to do is remove the four screws in the front of the skid plate. This right here is an alt rider skid plate, so it's only got the two up here. And the four down here. Sucker was on there pretty good. Okay, once all the screws are out, lower down your skid plate and set it aside. This is going to give us access to the oil filter and the drain plugs. Remove the two drain bolts on the bottom located right here and there's another one right here let's see if I can do it right there that guy and that guy and while we're here doing the front one we might as well go ahead and take out our oil filter okay loosen and remove your oil filter you let it drain out a little bit now while the front two things are draining you can see they're hitting the drain pan in a good location I'm gonna go ahead and remove that rear drain plug Okay, once your oil has gotten to the point where it is done draining, we're going to take a nice clean rag and we're going to go ahead and wipe around the ceiling areas of your oil filter and your drain plugs. Taking caution not to knock anything inside of there because you don't want any dirt inside of your oil. Okay, then we want to install our brand new oil filter. This one came pre-lubricated with a petroleum jelly it looks like. Uh, if your o-ring is not lubricated then go ahead and use some of your new motor oil and put it around the seal area there now they recommend that you torque this to 19 foot pounds I do not have the special tool to go onto this so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten it up as tight as I can by hand And there you go. Now it's time to install our drain plugs. You want to install both of them and torque them to 22 foot pounds. It's important not to forget your crush washers. And then there you go. Torqued. Next thing you're going to want to do is remove the cover for the DCT filter using an 8 millimeter socket I'm going to go ahead and break these loose make sure your oil pan 
is right below it. Okay. Now with that lid being off, you want to make sure you grab your little spring here that is in the middle of the filter. Do not misplace this because you're going to need it later. And using a pair of needle nose pliers, gently pull this filter out and then set it down in your drain pan. Now you want to make sure you don't get anywhere near these ceiling areas because if those get scratches in them, then that can provide a leak path. You don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and clean out the reservoir for your TCT oil filter using a clean rag and make sure there's no dirt or anything on the outside that can fall in. Okay, we have our brand new filter here. You're going to want to make sure that the blank side is facing out and the rubber seal goes in first. To lubricate the o-ring just a little bit, go ahead and pop her in there and make sure that is seated. Next, you want to put in your spring. There's your spring right there. And you want to install your oil filter cover, making sure that you got your spring inside of your recess there for it. And gently press and kind of rock it back and forth. You do not want to clip the O-ring on there. If you clip that O-ring, then you're going to be spraying oil all over the place as soon as you start your bike. And we're just going to go ahead and install your fasteners for your oil filter cover. And you got some spring tension kind of pushing back on you. So we're just going to snug those a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and torque it to 8 foot-pounds. Now that we have all of our fasteners and filters torqued up, cleaning up our area, cleaning all the oil that dripped all over the bike, fill it with our fresh oil. Okay, we're going to fill it up, but first we want to make sure that we wipe our o-ring sealing groove down because there's a little bit of a recess in there and the last thing you want to do is knock some dirt in there so you want to use a little bit of oil on the end of a q-tip and that'll uh, clean it right up see how clean that is i recommend using a, a clean skinny uh, as it's called a funnel <laughs> you want to use one of those motul 10w40 full synthetic four-stroke motorcycle oil All right, once you've filled it up with a recommended amount, which is 4.4 uh, .4 US quarts of uh, the recommended oil, it's time to check your level. So first thing we're gonna do is remove this and wipe it off. You do not wanna screw this back in. You just put it all the way in and then all the way out. And then see right there, we're a little bit high, which is normal. Uh, you're gonna wanna start the engine, let it run for a minute, and then you wanna shut it off and check it again. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So make sure you screw in all of your plugs. If you don't, it will splatter oil all over the place. Trust me. When putting on your oil fill cap, we want to check your O-ring. Make sure it is free of uh, any kind of grit or debris because anything that's holding that O-ring away from the ceiling area is a potential leak path. You just want to snug that up. You don't want to over tighten it because it is made out of plastic. You can strip out the threads on the uh, the cap or uh, end up putting little plastic shavings inside of your oil. All right, let's go ahead and start this up. All right, after letting it run for, I don't know, about 40 seconds or so, I'm gonna go ahead and double check our oil level and make sure that uh, we're still at the correct level after the oil filled up the filters and populated the journals and all that. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and remove it, wipe it off, put her back in, and then check it. So we're going to have to add a little bit more oil, which is no big deal. Yep, we're almost there. Okay, after putting more oil in it, we're going to go ahead and check it. Just gonna give this a little spin to the left just to make sure that butterfly goes all the way around in the oil. And there you have it. We are at the line. Now you wanna put all of your caps back in. 
making sure they are just finger tight. You don't want to over torque them. All right, now it is time to reinstall our skid plate. I'm going to be using some uh, molybdenum disulfide or moly graphite anti-seize on the threads. Some people might want to put Loctite on these, but they are exposed to the underside of your bike, so they get all sorts of uh, nice weather action, all sorts of stuff, and these ones popped loose on me, so I want to make sure that you put a little drop on there and work it into the threads, so then you don't end up getting trapped out in the field with the fastener breaking off inside of your skid plate. Kind of need that thing. And you want to do it on the bearing face as well. The bearing face is whatever surface is going to be twisting or rubbing against the uh, component that you're working on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install our skid plate. Uh, if you have an alt rider skid plate, you're going to need a six millimeter for the front and a five millimeter for the rear fasteners. Now the front fasteners, you just want to install them. You don't want to torque them down yet because they provide a little bit of wiggle room for these rear fasteners, which as you can see, are molly coated with a thin layer of NSEs. Once again, you don't want to snug up all your fasteners quite yet. You're just trying to get them indexed in the holes. And once you get all four of them in, you want to go ahead and start tightening the ones on the bottom first. Now you don't want to go too tight because you don't want to start bending things. If you bend things, then they might not want to come back apart or go back together very easily. Alright, then we're going to finish it off with a 6mm Allen head. And tighten these front fasteners. And there it is. There is the oil change complete on the 2019 Africa Twin with DCT.